Hello everyone and welcome to the Arabic Vowels series. By the end of this series, you'll be able to read almost any Arabic word. So, let's get started. First, for those who followed the previous series about the alphabet, you would notice that we only basically learned consonants. So, where are vowels in Arabic? Vowels in Arabic basically consist of two types, short and long vowels, much like any other language. Take English as an example. Short vowels are found in words like sit, for example, and long, like in the word seat. In Arabic, we tend to only write the consonants and leave all the vowels out. And vowels are written differently, not like in English. In this lesson, we'll start by learning the short vowels. And in order to make things easier, I decided to use these lines to make it easier for us to follow the lesson. There are three short vowels in total in Arabic. Some are written on top of the letter and some are written underneath the letter. The first one we're going to learn today is this sign that you write on top of the letter. And it gives the sound of A. And the name of this symbol is called Fatha. Fatha. This is how you write it in English. The second short vowel looks like a small Wow in Arabic, and it gives the sound of O or U. And this symbol is called Dhamma. Dhamma. And this is how you spell it in English. The last short vowel is written underneath the letter. And it gives the sound of E. And it is called Kasra. Kasra. So let's see how these short vowels work. If you add fatha to b, you're going to get b, b. If you add dhamma to b sound, you're going to get bu, bu. While if you add kasra to b, you're going to get b, b sound. So b, bu, b. And in order to keep track of these three short vowels, I'm going to write them on the top left corner so that they will stay there for the remaining of the lesson. Let's have some examples to see how these short vowels work in a real word. The first example that we're going to talk about is basal. Basal. It means onion. Notice how we say b, And it even comes back in how we spell it in English. B. A second example is Burj. 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 And it means tower. See how the difference of B in the first example and the second example. The first one we said B, and in the second one we said Bu. Burj. Basal. The third example is Bint. Bint. And bint means girl. So, now see how the different B sounds between all three of these examples. B, basal, bu, burj, b, bint. So, another rule that a lot of people could miss or mix up, and that is vowels, short vowels, are always pronounced after the letter, after the consonant. So, for example, a word like dub, as you can see that the sign of dhamma is on top of del. That means that the short vowel will follow our pronunciation of de. So, we will say dub. So, we can't put it before the d. We can't put it there. It has to come after. And dub means bear. And of course, you can have several short vowels in the same word, like in this example. Ka, ta, ba. What we see in Arabic, only the consonants in the beginning, but then using the short vowels, you see the word becoming to its last shape. Another example is za, ra, a. Za, 
ra'a. As you can see, the fatha is symbolized by using a as a short vowel. Sometimes we have different short vowels in the same word. Like this example, we have seen, meme, ain. But these are just the consonants. Let's add the vowels. It will be sa mi a sami a sami a Another example, we have fa ta ha When we add the vowels, then we have the proper word. It will be futiha 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 so you might be wondering now, are short vowels really that important? Actually, they are extremely important. A word like the one we see on the screen right now. The word is made up of three consonant sounds and we don't know, and we don't know what the vowels are yet. So, what you should be seeing right now are two identical words. However, by adding different vowels, you could basically change the time and the meaning of the word completely. The first one, katabe, and the second one will be ku, ti, be, kutibe. As you can see, we put different vowels, and of course, this is not random. Of course, this happens according to rules that we will talk about, of course, but we have Two identical words when it comes to the consonant sounds, but we have different vowels. The first one is katabe, the second one is kutibe. Katabe means write and kutibe means was written. So vowels could change the meaning of the word. An example that I gave earlier was bint. You noticed I didn't put any signs above or underneath the, the noon or the te. What does that mean? Why is this like that? Well, this is going to be the fourth symbol that we're going to learn today, and that is this small round symbol. This small round symbol means sukun or no vowel. You could choose to, to put it or leave it completely without any vowels. So, in the example we have here, bint, which means girl, we only have one short vowel. And that is e, and that is the kasra under the ba. And we notice that the noon has sukun, so there is nothing after it, there is no vowel after it, and the ta has sukun also with nothing after it either. Again, you can use sukun or completely nothing above or under the letter, which gives the same effect. So you'll have bint, bint, only one vowel in this word. And we're going to add the sukun, which is symbolized by a circle, a perfect circle. Well, as perfect as you can make it, of course. And that means no vowel, no short vowel. Another example to highlight the sukun, the word kelb, kelb means dog. As you can see, there's just one short vowel at the beginning of the word. So to recap what we've done so far. First, there are three short vowels in the Arabic language. They are fatha, dhamma, kasra. Short vowels are pronounced after the letter, not before. And when there is no vowel, that means you're going to use this round symbol which means sukun. So this is going to be it for the short vowels. Next time we're going to go further with the longer vowels and to see how we're going to deal with them. If you like this video or learn anything from it, please subscribe, like and share the video so that other people can learn from it too. And right now I'm going to say I'll see you in lesson two.